Hello, this is Julius from Basic Financials. Um, today I'm going to do a video to show you how to register for self-assessment. Um, so you might want to do this if you want to, um, to prepare a tax return for some reason. There are, there are a whole bunch of reasons why you might need to prepare a tax return. It might be that you're self-employed. Could be that you're subject to the higher income child benefit charge. Might be that you've got rental income. It might be that you've got um, employment expenses that are over two and a half thousand pounds a year that you need to claim back through some way. And then one way of doing it is through your self-assessment tax return. Now it can be a bit cumbersome registering to complete a self-assessment tax return. There are three steps to it really. The first step is to, first of all, register for self-assessment. That's the bit I'm going to show you in this video. Um, what this does, it tells HMRC that you want to register for self-assessment. It will ask you, why do you want to register? And you'll have to tell, it, t tell them why in, this, in the questionnaire that it comes up with. Um, so that's the first step, to register for self-assessment, which will give you your unique taxpayer reference, or UTR. Um, once you've got that in the, through in the post, you will then be able to um, register, well, you can, at any time, you can actually set up your, um, your personal tax account. You can do that any time. But once you've got your self-assessment, you, you, your unique taxpayer reference, then you'll need to register to use the self-assessment service so that you can then prepare your tax return using HMRC software. Um, that will give you a, um, an authentication code in the post again, which you then have to type in to activate the service. So there's a whole bunch of steps, but um, well, three steps really, but this is the first step, and it's to, to actually register for your unique taxpayer reference, register for self-assessment. So I'm going to do it um, imagining you're, you're trying to find where to go. So as you can see, I'm on um, Microsoft's Edge web browser home page I'm going to type into this search I'm going to type in um, register for self assessment we'll see why yeah and um, we'll see why why it's sometimes a little bit comes from there you are looking for a government website and um, that's so we don't really want to go to this one here this register for self assessment dot gov. Um, anyone who's watched my videos before will also know that I've got an um, inverted theme on my, what is it called, high contrast theme on my computer because I don't see very well. So it's black, white on black. Um, so don't worry if it looks a bit different from yours, it's just because of the way I have my things set up. So I'm going to tick on this one, or click on this one, and see what it says. It's not always obvious. Um, overview. Okay, I'm not going to go through all the details, but I'm just going to show you why it might not be obvious. Um, there are a number of reasons here, different ways you can register. All right, this is the first thing. This is why, if you say just, if you were to just type in "register to complete a tax return," um, it will probably lead you back to here, because there are different reasons and different ways you actually. Um, register depending on whether you're self-employed, um, not self-employed, or registered as as a partnership in a, in a partner. Now, um, in this particular circumstance, we're we're doing it because we've got employment expenses which are more than two and a half thousand pounds, um, for particular reasons. Um, so we're not self-employed in this case. We're not a partnership. Got no no business going. Um, we're employed but we're going to register because we want to do a tax return so we can complete um, the, the expenses bit. This would be the same thing if you had rental income because you're not self-employed, um, but you've got other types of income or if you've got um, lots of dividends that you need to declare or lots of interest or some other form of income um, or even if you're subject to the high income child benefit charge, which is quite common now. Um, you would want to be registering this way. So not self-employed, that's what we're going to be doing. Register for self-assessment. Okay, register if you're not self-employed. If you have a... If 
you have to send a tax return, it's not necessarily have to, you might want to. That's what we want to do in this place. And do not send one, did not send one last year. In other words, if you did send one last year, you've already got a UTR, a unique taxpayer reference, but we haven't. So we're going to register for self-assessment by the 5th of October, yes. I'm going, we're actually doing it for the, to be registered for the year to the 5th of April 2021. So we're sort of registering well ahead. We, if you need to, if you have to ta do a tax term for some reason, you're supposed to register by the 5th of October following the end of the tax year, but we're doing it well in advance. Um, if you have not filed online before, register using form SA1. And that's what we're going to do. And after you've registered, you'll receive your unique taxpayer reference, UTR, um, in the post within 10 working days. That might not happen at the moment because of COVID, but don't worry, you should get it. 21 days if you're abroad yet. Um, then, after you've got that, create your online account. That's what I was saying about your personal tax account. Sign up for self-assessment. Um, this is the service to actually uh, get, do your tax return. Um, and that's the one where you get your activation code. I think I called it auth authentication code earlier on, but it's an activation code. Uh, you get that in the post. So this is the three-stage process, really. So there's, there's four there, actually. But um, anyway, here we go. So register using Form SA1. That's what we're going to do. Right. Where are we? HMRC's website has tends to tend to send you around in circles, but uh, so bear with me. I don't think it has done this time. There's different ways of doing it. Again, you could print it out and send it off um, by post, but we want to really do it online. So register for self-assessment and get a tax reference. Fill in and send. That's what we're going to do, is it? Fill in and send. Register for self-assessment in print yeah we don't want to do that yeah so we're going to be doing this one and I said when it says send I'm pretty sure it means send it online just check there aren't any others yeah I'm pretty sure right so we're going to go into that okay so the top part of this form um, has all the personal details on you need to put in your name and address and your date of birth and importantly you'll need your national insurance number um, if you don't have your national insurance number, and you, um, it's only going to be all right if you don't need one. And you'll need to tick a box to say why you don't need one. But um, ideally, if you have got your national insurance number, well, if you've got a national insurance number, put it in. Um, and then you'll get to this, once you've filled out all that personal information, you'll get to the bits here which says, why do you want to be filling in a tax return or why do you need to? And it goes through these various different questions, which I'm not going to read out because you can look through them. Um, now, if you find, in this case, we're doing it because we've got expenses and none of none of these boxes seem to fit that. Um, yeah, they're about, you've got a capital gain, you've got other sorts of income subject to the higher, higher rate um, child benefit charge. Um, none of those apply. So have a look through to see see why you know, you'll, you may well have a box that fits in here. Another one's rental income, so you'd be able to tick the box there. And each time you'd need to say when it started from. So, um, if for example, if you started receiving rental income, if you're doing it for that reason, on say the 1st of August 2020, your first tax return would be, you'd need to say that, and then your first tax return would be for the tax year ended, the 5th of April 2020. Importantly, I'll say just while, while I think about it, um, when you do do your tax return, you need to put in all of your income, not just the bit of income you're doing it for. If you've got rental income, yes, that means you have to put that in. But if you're also employed, you need to put all of that in as well. You need to put your interest, your dividends in. So, um, yes, yeah, so you do need to put everything in. Um, right, well, we're going to get down to the bottom bit where I, I sh uh, we've already put in the reason here. So, there's, as you can see, there's quite a lot of reasons here. But if you can't find it... Um, 
then um, you get to the point here where it says any other reason and you type in there put in the date I've, I've said here we've got employment expenses that need to be filled in um, type in the date and at the end you'll click next and when you click next you'll get the details up done to for you to check of all the all your personal information and the reasons you've put in um, and then you'll submit and once you've submitted then you'll just wait and you'll get in the post you'll get your unique taxpayer reference that's the first stage done um, yeah I think I will leave it at that I think it's probably given you enough and if you've got any questions, um, please put them in the box below. Remember, I will follow up with some, some other bits uh, once you've got your unique taxpayer reference, what you do then. Um, now, yeah, if you like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you again to another video soon. Hope that helps.